Awesome. So, hmm? I said awesome. Okay. <laughs> All right. I'm, I'm glad you like it. So, uh, well, but we do have two examples in mind, right? So, what are the numbers for those examples? So, for the dot product. All those teams would be. First. So, what, what's the dot product of i dot i? One. I dot i is one. All right. I dot j is zero. zero. J dot i zero. zero and j dot j one. one. All right. So these are the numbers. And well, you know, when you have four numbers, there are different ways to put them together. And one of the ways is to make a matrix and to put C11, C12, C21, C22. At this point we won't be able to see the difference between four numbers sitting in a square matrix or four numbers sitting in a row or in a column. It doesn't really matter. But for from linear algebra point of view that you took or maybe didn't take, uh, this makes a little difference. And uh, usually this product I mean, these four numbers will be put together as a matrix. And then, once you make a matrix, the dot product corresponds to the matrix 1, 0, 0, 1. The identity. Identity, yes. Anybody taking or who took linear algebra recognizes the identity matrix, which is the simplest matrix possible. Well, except the zero matrix, right? But zero matrix results in very simple product. <laughs> Any two things multiply to zero. Not highly useful. Now, let's uh, look at the area. So why don't we go ahead and figure out what the matrix is. What's the area product of i and i? Zero. What about i and j? Is it one? All right. What about J and I? If one is negative, well, if 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 this is one, then this is negative one, or vice versa. And the agreement on this sign is just something everybody makes. And, uh, it's well, this agreement about the sign is uh, is about the choice we make for the polar coordinates of how you measure angle. And we measure angle this way positively, that way negatively. You may as well switch the rule, but we have to argue with everybody and ask everybody to switch the rule so that everybody understands. Right? So once we make a choice, we just stick with it, and oh, let's stick with this choice. And this is uh, a matrix corresponding to the uh, area. Now you see, of course, uh, these are two simple matrices producing two interesting products. But now you can see how many more different products are possible. Now the question is, of course, all these products are not either dot product or area, right? We have many more. What would be another natural question to ask? Is there any way to express any product in terms of these two. Because you see, you can multiply possibly this matrix by one number. And if you multiply the whole matrix by a number, it will still be, it will still generate a product. So if you multiply it by two, the resulting product will be just twice as large as dot product. So in some sense, it will resemble all the properties of dot product except being twice as large. If you multiply area product by a half, the result will be just a half of the area, and you can still visualize what it means. And so it keeps all those nice properties of the area. Now, can you get any matrix like this as a combination? Some number A times 1, 0, 0, 1, plus some number B times 0, 1, minus 1, 0. Yeah. No, why not? 
Uh, uh, what if you wanted to, uh, that? Yeah, because if you point that two point different, different sign. Just a, so if you, you know, the, the way to to assemble this in one matrix is to have a a and then b minus b. And of course, this is not doesn't look like arbitrary matrix. It has two well, two entries on diagonal are the same. Two entries on anti-diagonal are opposite. So if you have something different, that cannot be expressed as combination. And again, we are stepping in some linear algebra here. So what we have is we have a linear space of all possible matrices. In other words, in our context, it is space of all possible products. We chose two examples, and we like those examples, and we ask, is it possible, well, is it true that that space is basically formed by these two matrices by taking linear combinations? In other words, are these two matrices making a basis of that linear space, and they are not? And another way to argue about why these two cannot be cannot make a base for that space is to count dimension. Because if you look at one matrix, it basically tells you, well, any product by a number generates just one dimension in the space of matrices. That matrix generates another dimension, so the arbitrary sums will give you two dimensional space of matrices. So there are, algebraically speaking, you have two different parameters to play with. But a general, a general product has four parameters. So you can think of this as four dimensional space. And you can only generate two dimensional space out of those two matrices. So you cannot possibly describe a four dimensional space by a two dimensional space. So what should we do? Find two more. So we have four dimensional space of all the matrices, and we have in that space two vectors. Let's call this capital I, because that's the standard notation in linear algebra. Let's call that capital J. So we have this vector capital I, capital J. We need two more. How do we choose? Pick values for our numbers. Pick some values. Well, it would be good to have more good examples of products, right? We don't have any at this time. So how, how else can we think about it? Well, now we can think about matrices. Can we think about choosing a matrix that is relatively simple and will not be in that two-dimensional space of I and J. It will stick out of that plane. It will not be a combination of these two matrices. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Like one, two, three, yeah. four. Okay. Why do you think this matrix is not a combination of those two? Because the, the top and... Because, well, because one, the, one, and two, two are two different numbers. Yes, exactly. So, uh, because you see, diagonal entries are different here. The anti-diagonal entries are not opposite of each other. So, this matrix is definitely out of this plane. And you may choose that matrix as another third-dimensional entity. But then, you see, you have three <coughs> in four-dimensional space. You need one more. How would you choose the last one? One one zero zero. One one zero zero. 
you may try that. Let's call it M. What do you want about it? About this matrix? That when combined with the other three gives a linear basis for everything. Yes, you want this matrix. Well, geometrically speaking, you want the fourth vector to stick out of this three-dimensional space. You want this matrix not to be describable by any combination of these three matrices. Because if for some reason you figure out that this matrix is equal to 1 times this matrix, 2 times that matrix, minus 3 times that matrix, then it doesn't give us anything new. Then a product, in other words, in, in context of product, then product generated by this matrix can be described as a little bit of dot product plus a little bit of area minus a little bit of that strange product. Mm -hmm. And you describe whatever you have in terms of everything you know. So how do you check that this is not producible right, by those three matrices? So let me suggest the choices. So well, let's keep calling this M and that N. But can you reduce your echelon would work? Hmm? But you could use your reduce row echelon form because if you, if you put all those matrices together into a four by four matrix, like the, the the dot product one is the top row, the next one down is the other row, indicating each each uh, entry in the, one of the matrices is a variable. Okay. When can, if you put that into reduce row echelon form. Well, if you put that into a matrix and then took the reduced right echelon from when that worked? Yes, that, that would be a way to check. Right. So, so you, there is a way to check if this is a combination of rows or not. Well, if it is not, it's good. But if it is, you have to think of something else. So let's try to make something, uh, something simple. And that simple is going to be 0, 1, 1, 0. What do you think? So this matrix has same entries on. And, and then if you want, you can, can you guess about there. one zero zero negative one? Yeah. One zero zero negative one. Oh, see, the, the beauty of these, this choice is that we immediately know that this matrix cannot be expressed as a combination of these three. Right? Why is that? Because the feature of this matrix is that the entries on diagonal are opposite of each other. Right? Can you make those entries opposite using any of these three matrices? No. That's it. So what's the so let's let's emphasize the basis. Um, well, the reason for success. Well, the reason is, if you think about it, is that for each of these two matrices and for those two, we have just identified the feature that each matrix carries, and all the others don't. Well, we identified that feature based on this numeric values of a matrix. So the feature of this matrix is that entries are opposite on the on the diagonal. The feature of this one is that the anti-diagonal has the same values, and none of these produce, produces that. So when you figure out something new, you better have some features to make those things special.